I'd like to run through some of the techniques that I use in the Nano Loop app. The sampler instrument allows you to achieve some uh, really great effects, and I think the, the grid coupled with that sampler instrument allows you to really quickly make um, some fantastic sample-based music. going to start with a simple rhythm and then begin tapping out notes for um, a bass patch that's right here. I'm going to make sure the rhythm is varied so that I've got some notes triggering on uh, both uh, the eighth notes and the every other sixteenth. All right now Turning up the swing value uh, causes the bass pattern to swing. In order to get a better handle on this, let's put a, uh, a noisy hit on every single 16th note in the grid, and then turn up the swing. Here's what we get. Every other note is delayed a little bit. Now another way we can delay notes on the grid is by turning up the attack value. This will uh, ramp up an envelope before bringing it back down. And that puts the peak of the sound um, a little bit later in time. So we can return the swing to uh, zero and then come through on the grid and increase the attack value for every other note in order to get swung off beats. Uh, we can add a little bit of swing to this pattern too, just to emphasize it. This results in swung off beats of a different flavor uh, because every other beat is getting a different envelope. In order to get a pattern swinging in a way that's a little bit less rigid than just using the native swing, we can um, import a rhythmic sample onto the grid, like this one, and then uh, trigger it at regular intervals and adjust the pitch in order to create a repeating pattern that uh, lends your whole composition um, a sort of swing that is inherited from the rhythmic characteristics of this sample. Changing the octave or the pitch of the sample changes the speed of the playback and so completely changes the way uh, the rhythm of the sample nestles into your uh, composition. This takes a little bit of experimentation to settle into a nice groove, uh, but it can be very rewarding. different sample for a second. I often like to repeat the sample on the quarter notes and then just find a pitch that works well for me.
again playing with the pitch and the offset and also the position of the uh, triggers on the grid will uh, vary the feel of this. You can use the fine tune parameter on the sampler to uh, kind of dial in the uh, synchronization of the sample to the grid and the tempo that you're working with. got a track that I've worked on in Nano Loop. This track is built from uh, chords, polyphonic material, uh, and normally that's uh, tricky to do in Nano Loop without using up a bunch of tracks because uh, the individual instruments are monophonic. So let me show you uh, one method to create chords on the grid and then resample them into a second composition. First, I'm going to just lay out some um, notes on the grid, and these are notes from chords that uh, I've worked with before and written down the uh, note values of. So once um, I've entered in all the notes for the chords that I want to use, I'm going to go through and increase the uh, decay time of these notes so, so that the chords have a little bit more presence. I'm also going to uh, shift the pitch of these notes up one octave. When we resample, we can uh, bring the sample playback down by another octave if we want to get back to the original pitch of the chord but the higher pitch and faster speed will allow us to fit more into the um, sample. I'm going to add a little bit of vibrato to the um, chords by changing the modulator over to a sine wave and uh, turning up the LFO amount a little bit on each of these uh, individual voices of the chords. I'm also going to add a little bit of noise to this. Um, this will just contribute to a little bit of flavor that will get picked up in the resampling. I'm going to stop the playback and I'm going to go into the menu and I'm going to export loop. And I'm going to export the loop to the clipboard. And once I do that, I'm going to stay in this, um, in this composition and I'm going to go to one of the sample tracks and I'm going to paste that sample into the sample instrument. And if you uh, look at this, you see that uh, I've got all six of my chords spread out there, uh, but they're spaced all the way to the end of the sample instrument. And that's going to be a problem because if we manipulate the offset of the sample instrument in order to... Um, select between the different chords, uh, the offset numbers don't actually go all the way to the end of that sample. So we want to shift up the tempo of this pattern a little bit, export it to the clipboard again, uh, and then export this one more time. And now you'll see if I adjust the offset in the sample instrument, I'll be, get, I'll be able to get all the way to that last chord. That'll be important. So now let's start a... Um, whole new composition and paste our chords into one of the sample instruments. Here I've got it just triggering at the beginning of every measure. I can bring it down one octave to bring the chords back down to their original pitch. And now I'm going to bring down the, the decay time of this sample so that we get uh, 
just individual hits that we can put on the grid. I'm going to put these on the grid and turn up the swing a little bit. And now I can start adjusting the offset on the grid in order to select between different chords within a measure. I'm going to program a very quick rhythm section in here just to help give me a feel for uh, the tempo. I'll go through how I like to generate my nano loop kick sounds uh, a little bit later. For now I'm just going to do some little noise hits and swing them and then uh, the kick drum too on the ones twos, threes, and fours. Now I'm going to program some chord patterns, four in total, so that I can uh, loop them and come up with a four measure spread. Here's the result of that. Once you're happy with your pattern, uh, you can come back into the parameters of the sample instrument and uh, do things like change the bass pitch to see if you like the sound of the chords pitched up a little bit from where they are originally. I'm pretty happy with this. So there's a couple different ways to get like um, a pseudo delay effect. Uh, the first one is to go into your measures with chords here and duplicate um, any of the hits so that every hit uh, is followed by an identical hit one sixteenth note apart. And on uh, those uh, duplicated hits, you're going to take the volume down so they sound like repeats. Sometimes this works really nicely. The repeats are going to be uh, swung according to the swing that you have on the pattern, so that's a little bit odd. Uh, if you want to avoid that, you can uh, instead set delays by setting the loop length of the sample instrument. The loop length will kind of uh, interact with the decay time. The loop length is kind of equivalent to delay time, and then the decay uh, is sort of like feedback here. I'm going to copy this chord pattern over to an empty slot in the composition so that um, I can have a main version of these chords which don't have the loop in them at all. But on that second copy, I'm going to turn down the volume of the sample instrument a little bit so that the repeats are subtler. I can change the fine tuning of the sample instrument on the uh, repeats in order to get delay trails that are a little bit out of tune from the main chords. This is also a nice way to get um, chorusing if you just want to make a straight duplicate of your uh, first pattern. Thank you.
let's talk about making a kick drum sound with the native nano loop uh, pulse instrument. Uh, the trick here is to bring down the decay and also lower the octave of the pattern by two or three. Uh, and then set the filter frequency very low and the resonance very high. This will cause the pulse um, instrument to resonate at like a, a low frequency. And then when you set your uh, pitch envelope settings such that the pitch of the pulse wave uh, drops quickly on every note, the instrument will um, start to resonate like a kick drum once the um, pitch sweep gets low enough. Once you're here, you can change the decay time, the decay time, and also the um, pitch envelope decay time in order to get different resonances and pitches out of your kick drum. Setting a slow pitch envelope can um, result in a, in a higher pitched kick drum. You'll get more click if your uh, pitch envelopes start off higher. Let's bring this back into the composition that we were working on earlier. I'm also going to uh, change the noise hits to make them a little bit softer. Let me switch over to making a uh, snare-ish kind of sound in uh, Nano Loop with the noise instrument. I'm going to put a noise hit here on the twos and fours. Now, um, the pitch of the noise instrument uh, can only go down from middle C. So if you're going to set noise modulation, or rather uh, pitch modulation, such as the LFO on the noise instrument, you're going to want to set the uh, pitch down a little bit, just starting off. Um, for kind of a snare sound, it's nice to have a um, LFO modulation on the noise instrument on the pitch, and to set the frequency of that modulation pretty high. Now I'm just going to change the attack and decay settings until I get something I like here. Um, so if you're doing like kind of a standard house-ish pattern with your snare, and you want to get that classic um, situation where the snare sounds come in a tiny bit early, just go ahead and shift the pattern so that your snare sounds are 1 16th note early, then set the swing up to 8, 9, or 10 in order to get snares that are just a touch early. make some changes to the duplicate of the chord program that we have set up as a, sort of like an echo. satisfying bass patch using the uh, FM style instrument that's native to Nano Loop. Just gonna find the root note here for a second before I bring it down a couple octaves. Now you can set the FM instrument so that it um, lowers the modulator amount instead of changing the pitch you can get a really satisfying sort of FM bass uh, sweep going here. 
just like so. And after playing around with uh, bass patterns and setting them to loop over four measures, this is what we end up with. So my video recording failed um, while I was adding one more element to this composition. Uh, I set up the sampler instrument to record just off of the microphone while uh, a car was passing by. And I got this, um, uh, this sort of drive-by sample here. I'm going to show you how to use a noisy sample like this to give the impression that there's a compressor on the master that's causing the uh, noise floor to duck down on uh, every downbeat. So here's the sample just by itself. I'm going to repeat this sample every quarter note, and I'm going to bring back in the rest of our percussion. Now I'm going to increase the attack of these notes and play with the pitch too. Increasing the attack is going to give the um, is going to cause the volume of the sample to drop every quarter note uh, just at the same time as the kicks are coming through. final version I'm sequencing the pitch of this background noise uh, to change over the four measures of the loop. It kind of pulls everything together. Thank you.